Hello everyone. Welcome to Vita Lecture Series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Pipeline Hazards. So in this video, I'll be telling you what do you mean by pipeline hazards, how many types of hazards are there. But my advice is to go through with the previous video, which is about the concept of pipelining. So first you must understand the concept of pipelining, then it would be beneficial for you to refer this video. What is pipelining? If you able to recall, I told you in the previous video, I've taken a very uh, general, very basic example of the laundry to give you the concept of the pipelining. So what is pipelining? It is a process, it is a technique where multiple instructions are actually overlapped when during the execution. So this is what the pipelining, but there are certain problems which may occur with that. What is that? The problems which occur uh, in the pipeline that is known as the hazard, right? So it means hazard is a problem which is uh, which is actually arising during the pipelining, and that may create certain kind of uh, problem scenarios where next instruction which is to be executed uh, there might be certain difficulties. So that is what actually the hazard is. There are three types of hazards. I'll be talking in this video. First is the structural hazard. Structural means whenever there is a requirement of same kind of resources, which is being required by two different instructions, that is the structural hazard. Data hazard means where sometimes there might be a situation that the data which is required that is dependent upon the previous instruction. So by the time the previous instruction is not being executed fully, the next cannot be uh, executed, right? So there might be certain situations in which the data is being required for which the next instruction is to be uh, hold or what kind of scenarios that is what the data has had. Control hazards, this is actually the problem means the causes the delay between the fetching of instructions. So control hazards, you may be able to see in the situations about the decision making in the control flow, like in the case of the branches, branching instructions, like in the case of the jump. I'll be talking in detail also. So let us start one by one. First is the structural hazard. Structural hazard, as I told you that there might be certain conflicts um, among the resource requirements. The resources may be a memory, the general purpose registers or the ALU. If same resources being required by many instructions or two instructions, so that will cause a problem and that will fall into the category of the structural hazard. Right. So what I have written when more than one instruction in the pipelining requires same resource in the same clock cycle, right? Then there will be a conflict and that is known as the structural hazard. So how it is to be avoided? I'll be telling you that also. Just to give you a glimpse, uh, you just try to recall there are usually four phases. Somewhere there are five phases, but four are the required one. So what are the four phases of the instruction? Fetch decode, execute and result writing. Here you can see I have taken four instructions I1, I2, I3, I4 and cycles T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6, T7. Why 7 is being written you will be able to understand in this particular slide itself. So what does mean if you are talking about instruction I1, first instruction. So how many phases are there? As I told you that there are four phases, right? Instruction fetch, instruction decode, instruction execute, result writing. Now in this you can see instruction is fetched from memory, right? At the same time result is to be stored into the memory also. What about second instruction? When first instruction is decoded, second instruction will be fetched. That is what the pipeline concept. Then second instruction decoded, executed. Along with the third instruction. Third instruction can be fetched when second instruction is being decoded. Right? So for the fourth instruction, 
Next, when the third instruction is being decoded, fourth instruction is being fetched. This is how you are understanding this concept means the you have introduced the concept of pipelining. But here, if you see, if you observe, you will be able to find out that in T4 cycle, in this particular cycle, you can see same resource, which is the memory. Memory is being required by instruction I1. At the same time, memory is required by instruction I4. Means same memory is being required by instruction I1 and I4. And memory is what? Memory is a resource. It means there is a conflict. Both the instructions require the same memory. So there is a possibility of resource clash. So that will create a situation of structure hazard. This is the same one I have told you. But how to avoid this particular situation? So you will be able to understand what is the scenario, how you can avoid this particular condition. So let us see. Means what is the scenario? This case and this case. It should be avoided. So the solution is you can see for instruction I1, I2, I3. Is everything fine? But the problem was at this particular point. So now what happened when the third instruction result is being stored. The third instruction is completely stored the result. Then in next cycle which is the T1 cycle next instruction is fetched from memory then decoded executed right back. The result is being stored. So this is how this is the solution when there are four instructions. So you can see this situation of structural hazard is being avoided and this will give you the solution. So in earlier case when we have introduced the concept of pipelining without any consideration we know that there are total seven clock cycles required but when we are avoiding the situation of structural hazard means the same memory requirement it requires 10 clock cycles to complete the execution without any problem. I hope this must be clear to you now. Coming to the next which is about the data hazard. What is this data hazard? As I told you that during the execution of the instructions, instructions are, uh, are being fetched one by one being decoded, executed. So when one instruction is being executed and it is dependent upon the other instruction, right? Which is already being in processed or what that is the situation of the structural hazard. So the order of read or write operations obviously there are these two operations read and write. So reading and writing operations in a registers that is actually used to classify the different kinds of data hazard. There are three types of data hazards depending upon the read and write. Read after write. This is also known as flow true data dependency. Write after read, which is anti data dependency. Write after write, which is output data dependency. Let us discuss one by one. First is read after write. Read after write means here instruction uses data produced by the previous instruction. What do you mean by that? See, in this particular example, first instruction. I1 is this, add second instruction I2 is this. Now here you can see the second instruction, it requires data from the R0 register, right? And it is dependent upon the previous instruction. So till the time previous instruction is not being executed fully, result is not being, uh, being provided, it will not be utilized by the next means I2 dependent upon I1. This is what the read after write. Second, write after read. See, this is the uh, actually rare kind of uh, data hazard, but uh, obviously this is a relatively complex and this is uh, happened in a rarest situation, but you must understand this also. Here, second instruction writes onto register before the first instruction reads. What do you mean? See, second instruction, this is I2, this is I1. Second instruction is writing. You can see, subtract this, 
where the result is it will be in r not second instruction is writing into r not and when the data is available in r not then the first instruction which is i1 that will read the data and perform the addition operation right so first second instruction is to be executed result is to be provided then only first will read the data and will perform the execution so this is right after a read first writing then reading from the first reading for the first instruction so obviously this may also uh, um, hamper the program execution so this is a kind of data hazard third is right after write right after write means there are parallel instructions in this case there are two parallel instructions they are writing in the same register and writing must be done in the same order in which they have actually been issued if i1 issued earlier so writing will be done first in i1 if um, i3 issued uh, earlier so writing must be done in i3 earlier the same case there are two instructions i1 and i2 you can see in both the instructions result is in r not means same register result of addition and subtraction both is stored in r not same register is used two parallel instructions but they are both are using same register to store the data but obviously whatever is the sequence that sequence will be maintained so these are the three situations where data hazards may be observed read after write write after read write after write among these three write after write and write after read these two they actually um, occur whenever there is the situation of the parallel executions or out of order out of order means the uh, alternate way right so in the case of the parallel execution or somewhere these two hazards can be observed mostly and why this has happened this has happened because uh, the same registers is being allocated by the compiler even though this particular situation can be avoided this can be avoidable completely but in case compilers can allot the same register numbers so such kind of hazards can be seen so these are the three different types of data hazards coming to the third type of pipeline hazard which is the control hazard control hazard is the most complex kind of hazard which can be observed in the pipelining and as i told you that control hazard is mostly being observed in the case of the branching the conditional statements means wherever there is a concept of branches and the, there may will be some other instructions which may change the program counter uh, value so such kind of hazards falls into the category of control hazards as i told you about the branching hazard means depending upon the branching instructions the kind of hazard that will fall into this particular category obviously in the case of the branching hazard there will be a different flow of the program execution which is actually being controlled by the branch instruction uh, if if i give you an example about this suppose you have a branch instruction and uh, that branch instruction is at the beginning of the pipelining right beginning of pipelining so the branch instruction is being written at the initial at the beginning of the pipeline so what the the pipelining uh, may not know about which instruction is to be executed next because when first instruction is decoded second is being uh, fetched so it could be done means after the branch instruction or it could be any one other specified uh, instruction so what happened till the time pipeline will come to know which particular kind of instruction is or randomly pipeline has taken the instruction uh, depending upon the like scenario so in case if that random pick is wrong so that can lead to a pipeline hazard and special uh, specifically you can say a branch misprediction which falls into the category of branching hazard right that is what the control hazard the same kind of scenarios may happen in the conditional statements 
if else or because uh, there is a means in the pipelining concept immediately next instruction is being fetched decoded and depending upon the situation if the first instruction is giving you the result and then you have to go to that particular value and you have to pick the next instruction definitely both the cases vary and that may create the hazard that is called the control hazard so what i told you in this particular video i talked about the pipelining hazards there are three types of hazards structural data and control thank you so much for watching this video